Now, a team of scientists here in the UK have developed a new theory about the underlying cause of motor neurone disease, also known as ALS in the United States. The researchers at the University of Essex have found evidence the condition is caused by an imbalance in cholesterol and other fat levels in the body cells, triggered by gene mutations. If that's confirmed, the new theory could mean scientists can predict more carefully the cause of the disease in individuals and monitor the effect of potential new drugs. Let's get more on this now. We can make sense of it, we hope, with Dr. Handy Osdinla, who is Associate Professor at the Department of Neurology at Northwestern University. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I am in no way an expert on this, as you will have gathered. Could you just uh, make it clear why this is so important in as simple terms as possible? <laughs> I will try. So I think this is very important for uh, many reasons. First of all, I want to congratulate my colleagues because I think what they have tried to accomplish is that uh, they put different dots, uh, which are mutations in the diseases, and connecting that dot uh, or many dots actually helped us reveal the big picture. And in the big picture, they said uh, maintaining lipid homeostasis, lipid balance is very important. And when you actually have problems with that, motor neurons die. And they were focusing on the upper motor neurons, and that's my expertise, because the upper motor neurons have a very unique uh, structure such that they can uh, collect information from many different brain regions and they can send that information to spinal cord targets. And as you can imagine, they have the longest axon uh, to be able to connect brain with the spinal cord. And in the axon, we need high levels of lipids, uh, not for the membrane, but also for the myelin. So it is no surprise that the lipid is extremely important for neuron function. And uh, of course, cholesterol and you know, other fatty acids are part of this. And this study for the first time uh, puts it on the stage and makes us realize that this is one of the other factors that we have to consider when we uh, think about the complexity of the motor neuron disease. And um, so that's, I think, why it is important. Also, I want to say something about the upper motor neurons they are implicated in HSP, PLS, their degeneration leads to those diseases, but also they uh, progressively degenerate uh, together with spinal motor neurons. So by understanding why upper motor neurons die and how we can improve their health, we can have a broad implication in many diseases in which voluntary movement is impaired. So rather than focusing our attention to just one mutation, one gene, I think now we have to think about the mechanism and finding drugs for the mechanisms would be the way to go because once we find uh, uh, treatment options for the mechanisms, then we can have broad implications in many neurodegenerative diseases all at the same time. And I think that's where the field is going now. Professor, uh, I have seen the disease at close quarters. For anyone who hasn't, I guess we should remind people, in effect, it gradually removes almost everything your body has been able to do but leaves your mind intact. It's a pretty terrible thing. As I understand it, and just briefly, if you don't mind, this is a breakthrough in understanding, not necessarily yet a breakthrough in treatment. How soon could it be a breakthrough in treatment? You know, of course, it's hard to tell, but I can t what I want to emphasize is uh, previously in the drug discovery field, we were trying to find drugs for diseases. And I think we have to, uh, you know, move away from that thought because uh, rather than focusing on disease names, we have to focus on the mechanisms, the underlying mechanisms that cause the disease. Once we find drugs or treatment strategies for the particular uh, underlying cause, then we can have treatments for many diseases. And for lipid homeostasis defects, I, and I think there are other drugs already in the market. So then, you know, we can repurpose them. We can actually try them with uh, different patients as long as we know what is the underlying cause in that particular patient because there is a huge heterogeneity among the patients. And I think our uh, quest should be to understand what is the mechanism for each patient so that we can have more personalized treatments. Dr. Ozdina, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.